Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com. Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show sponsored by Arnold Clark. I'm Peter Martin. It is Wednesday. Thank you very much for joining us and supporting us on our YouTube channel. Alan Ruff, Tam McManus and Barry Ferguson are here in the studio to talk football. And there's uh, two big games for the <coughs> top two in Scotland. Yes, welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show. Delighted to have your company. Two big games, Rangers and Celtic still going at it at the top, despite that defeat against Hearts at the weekend. Gary McAllister, Stephen Gerrard and the backroom team will be hoping they can bounce back against Ross County and it's crucial that they do that, Barry Ferguson. Yep, they've got to um, bounce back as quickly as possible. I think the players and the management team would be delighted that there's a midweek game because if you... When you have a bad performance and a, a bad defeat, um, you want a game straight away. So they've got Ross County at home and they'll be desperate to, to get three points back on the board because that was a disappointing result and performance against us. We suggestion that maybe Morelos has picked up a calf strain. Would you risk him? Yeah, you, you've obviously got to ask a player of um, how it feels and I would imagine they would do a fitness test. But look, certainly Rangers, there's no doubt in my mind they've, they've missed him. He's a big player. It's not just his goal scoring. It's just the things he does off the ball as well, um, <coughs> running the channels, etc. So if he's 80-90% fit, if it's me, I would risk him. Are we now in a situation, Ruffy, where because the two of them are going head-to-head, -head, some people, individuals out there in society, can't conduct themselves properly and go beyond the line? I mean, we're hearing that uh, Alfredo Morelos has been the subject of someone obviously trying to tamper with his car. The last thing you want is for people's personal life uh, to be affected. And he's only a young boy. Yep. Uh, I mean, we've had it before a couple of years ago with the referees, you know, people uh, attacking the individual's houses. And, and, and it's ridiculous, really, because these are family people with, with kids. And uh, it's something you don't want your, your, your country to be associated with. You know, you, all right, you hear these things happening abroad. But when it's happening here, it's just too close for home. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, uh, uh, that's off the field, which is a worry, Tom, but on the field, the main uh, worry, I look at Rangers and I think to myself, if Morelos is not there, let's just say he's not there tonight um, and they don't take the risk, uh, you've certainly got Defoe. If he's not firing in all cylinders, there aren't many other options now. Would you, would you be inclined to really try and push the board out and say, you know, if you were Stephen Gerrard, knock the door and say, look, you need to find money from somewhere, one player in? I think if Rangers were going to go and bring one player in in one position, it would be a striker. Um, I think they need another striker. I think that the foe was poor on Sunday. You know, he he doesn't look thirty. He's not looked thirty-seven when he's been at Rangers, but I thought he looked every, you know, every day thirty-seven year old. He couldn't get away from from players. He, he was he threw and goal twice, and never <coughs> get his shot away. Um, so I think that. Morelos is so big to Rangers that if anything happens to him, Defoe's obviously like an able deputy. As you said, of nothing else, if he gets injured, who do they play through the middle? Greg Stewart or a Barker or somebody, like a winger type through the middle? I think they need to go and sign another striker, even if it's just on loan from now to the end of the season, they need cover. Yeah, the one thing I think that we've all been talking about, um, Barry, is quite simply if Rangers did indeed pick up injuries, you know, you're looking at Ryan Jack, Stewart, Helander, Tavernier, all of them with injury worries uh, along the way. But I, I just wonder if maybe it's a knee-jerk reaction. You know, we're now going game to game and, and passing judgment on everybody. Defoe gets the winner against him. <coughs> everybody wants him on a new deal. Defoe misses two chances against Hearts. Everybody says he's 37. That's not a slide on Tam. That's just we're now analysing it because it's so tight. Yep, exactly. That's what's happening. Look, he had a bad day at the office, there's no doubt. Um, and another day, Defoe would have probably finished the two chances he had. Do I still think he's the right man for Rangers as a backup to Morelos? I do, but I still think they're short up top. For me, I think 
if you'd want to challenge and win things, um, you need three top strikers, and I'm sure that will be in the back of the manager's mind. I think there's Rangers, they've got good competition in the wide areas, in the middle of the park, and as you mentioned, at the back as well. So that's the only place I would say their light is up top. Yeah, before we get your predictions, here's what uh, Rangers assistant coach Gary McAllister has to make of tonight's opposition, Ross County. Well, watching, watching the bits of Ross County you know, at, at Celtic Park, they, they had opportunities, they, they countered well, um, they were organised, so we're expecting a tough game. They'll come to Ibrox and make it try and make it difficult to get bodies behind the ball but the interesting thing at Celtic Park was you know on the regains they actually they got men forward and created a few chances so we've got to be wary of that. Gary McAllister highlighting the fact that Ross County yep. did indeed create chances against uh, Celtic you know had they been more clinical it may well have put a different uh, you know mm -hmm. complexion on the game Ruffy does it alter your thinking mm -hmm. tonight's game? No it doesn't uh, I think obviously Celtic were I think they tampered with the team a wee bit through injuries and I think there was five first team players not playing. I mean, you, you take a chance on that that the guys come in are going to turn it on. The first half, Celtic were, were not at the pace of the game and that's, that's why, because there was individuals getting a game who don't usually get a game. <clears throat> so I don't think Rangers have any problem tonight. I think Rangers support over their numbers and uh, I think the only worry they've got, if they don't get a first goal early, the tension then starts coming for the terrace and, and then the players have to deal with it. Prediction? I'm going to go Rangers 3-0. I think Rangers win the game 2 nothing. Yeah, I'll say 2 nothing, but I'll take 1-0 right now. <laughs> <laughs> Three points, that's all that matters, Peter. Uh, uh, OK, uh, there speaks a man who's won a title, and he does have uh, the bottle for title run-ins. He's been involved in many of them for Rangers. Uh, OK, from Rangers and their game against Ross County, what about Perth? St Johnston against Celtic. Well, Ismaili Sorrow has signed uh, for Celtic, and, and of course there's a suggestion at this point, um, Ruffy, that you know they could be now ready to offload Olivier and Cham, West Ham, mm -hmm. the latest to be linked with him. Yeah, he's been in and out of the side. Uh, you can see why, you know, but uh, he always usually throws them in in the European games. And for me, his style of play is geared towards the European style. And he's got bags of ability. I think even at Ibrooks one time, when he's a main part, uh, the, the, he's got a lot of skill. And uh, he just not... I think he would be forcing a move rather than than staying there because everybody wants to play and they'll certainly get a few bob for him. I mean, he's been uh, the last couple of months. I think he's been at it. Yeah, I think I, I agree with Ruffy. I think he's been great in European games uh, and in old firm games. I think the bigger the game, the better he's been. I think he's struggled against there. No disrespect to your St Mums and your Commandments every week having that consistency that you need as a Celtic or Rangers player to go out and give an eight out of ten every week. And a lot of games he's been off the boil, but. You know, I think he's he's one of those guys that Celtic can sell him and they put a little uh, sell-on clause on. He could go down to England uh, and maybe move on again to a bigger club because he's, he's got bags of ability. It's just that consistency every week to go and do a, be an 8 or 9 out of 10. Yeah, in this season of all seasons, Barry, I can't see him going. I, I look at it and I say, OK, Sorrow might come in, they might have to wait, you know, three or four games till he gets used to Scottish football, the pace, the touch, everything. Uh, you know, I, I think Celtic can afford to actually say we will take this wage bill all the way to the summer. Yeah, but I'm surprised that they would let him go. As the, the guys just mentioned there, technically he's, he's excellent. I, I really like him as a player. Um, look, if a crazy over comes in, they'll need to consider it, but yeah. I, I'm sure Neil Lennon would want to keep him because I thought last week <coughs> against Kilmarnock, I don't know how he'd done it the weekend because I didn't see it, but I thought against Kilmarnock he was excellent. Uh, as far as Ismail uh, uh, Sorrow is concerned, well, he does model himself on one particular player. Well, obviously, be aggressive in order to get the, the ball back. And if you're looking for a kind of a model or some, somebody I really uh, like as a player, it's N'Golo Kante. That's, that's the, the type of player you're looking for. Yeah, speaking through an interpreter there. So N'Golo Kante um, is the, the type of player that he likens himself to. Uh, Tom McManus, I, I, I liken myself to Pele, but I can't play like him. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's, 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 you know, he's got a bit of confidence about himself. I, I don't mind that at all. Um, he's obviously talking about a top player in Kante. I've actually seen that there was a little video going about on social media of, of some of his highlights. He's yeah. that type of player. You know, he breaks it up. He's, got, he's quick. He can get forward and go and support the strikers. He looks a handy player, he looks a good, a good footballer as well, so I think he'd be a good signing. He might take a little bit of time, as you said, to, to get used to the, the pace of the game here, but 
you know, he's one for the future, as is Kamala. And I think Celtic need to need players for just now. Yeah, uh, strangely about that, Tam, I love the fact that you're obsessed by those little clips on, uh, you know, Twitter and YouTube and everything like that because, you know, over a two and a half minute video, Tam looks a player, some of the, <laughs> some of the player, the goals that he scored for, for the Hibbies and all the other clubs, Ruffy, he looked dangerous. Is it 10 minutes? <laughs> no, it's 10 minutes. <laughs> it's two minutes, but it, was, but it was a right good two minutes. You know, how many times? I mean, I wonder, you know, I wonder how managers have to sift through Barry. You I, know. I'm going through it just but, now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting sent um, clips from a number of agents. Um, I like to go and see them in the flesh, yeah. if I'm being honest with you. I don't go be, be video. You could clip, as you just said, you could clip anybody and make them look good over a two minute video. Part for Ruffy. Part for, well... Tom. Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Ruffy, uh, Ruffy, if only for the fact that I'm of an age that I remember you were an absolutely top drawer keeper. And I think people of our generation looking at all those clips, the only one that sadly does the rounds on YouTube, and I think Andy Ritchie is boosting it financially, yeah. is the one where he chips you on the worst park I've yeah. ever witnessed in my life. Players are talking about they're not happy with the state of a pitch. Yeah. They want to have seen the game you played down at Capolo. Yeah, I think it was something like minus eight or something like that. It was concrete, uh, ice. It was just ridiculous. We don't take anything away from him. it. Was there's not many players can can do it would have the ability to try that. I mean, it was a bad goal from my point of view. but yeah. you got to give him credit. Yeah, it's quite a rare thing to to, to beat Ruffy from uh, a free kick or as far out as that. Only Kubias. Zico, uh, Edea, uh, need I go on? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> exactly. I've managed to do it. As far as the weather conditions are concerned, uh, it's not going to be great up there at Perth for St Johnson against uh, Celtic. Most of these guys tell me uh, at professional football level, the last thing you want to do is play in windy conditions. Uh, they'll be facing that tonight, among other challenges, according to Celtic manager Neil Lennon. I have no idea, honestly. Um... Might be their style of player, might be our style of player. Um, McDermott Park is, it's wide. You know the dimensions are are quite wide. Maybe that suits us, but I can't put a specific reason on why. You know we've played well against them over the last sort of eight occasions, and that might be enough motivation for Tommy himself, like you know, to try and change that. Yeah, I mean, just had an unbelievable record up there at McDermott Park, and always scoring goals, Rafi. So how's it going tonight? Yeah, I think again Celtic will be too strong. Uh, again, be interesting to see what the lineup is. Uh, he tampered with playing Griffiths up there uh, at the weekend, and it didn't work, you know. But he wasn't frightened to change it. Uh, so I would think Edward will, will start tonight, and I think Celtic will win three 0 One 0 Celtic for me. Tight game. I think St Johnston will keep it as tight as long as possible. I think the conditions will come into play. I mean, we've played up there when it's been windy and it's, it's difficult, but I think quality in the end for Celtic will come through and they'll win the game. OK, let's have a look at the table to see how tight it is, top and bottom as well. <clears throat> and as you can see, Celtic still uh, with that uh, five-point advantage with Rangers with a game in hand. Uh, so clearly there is uh, still a title race going on. Nothing has been decided just because of one defeat at Tynecastle. You can give us your view on that across all our social media. Uh, just aside from uh, the two games... Uh, uh, we're going to talk about a player who potentially could be <coughs> leaving Celtic or will they dig in and hold on to him? We're talking, of course, about Craig Gordon. That's coming up after we test you with this week's quiz. I think more than a few of you will be able to nail that competition. You could win yourself a, a special prize. Uh, good luck with the competition. As far as uh, the competition we are talking about, the race for the Scottish Premiership, we mentioned the fact that uh, teams will be reluctant to let some players who could still do a job in the second half of the season. One of them might be Craig Gordon. <coughs> um, I think he wants to play uh, regularly. He's in the last six months of his contract. Would you let him go to Hearts? 
I don't think they can afford to let them go, you know, with the injuries they've got. They've just let the young boy Connor Hazard go back to Dundee. It'd be a big risk unless he's got, yeah, unless he has got another goalkeeper of quality in the background that he can bring in. But I can appreciate where Craig's coming from. You know, at 37, you want to be playing. You know, I know he's reportedly getting something like 20 grand a week. But at the end of the day, it's playing football at the end of your career that matters. So Andy wants to try and get back into the Scotland team. Uh, which is an added bonus. He'll want to go, but I don't think Celtic will learn. Uh, and at the end of your career, Ruffy, if you were on 20 grand a week, would you just happily sit there and see it out at Celtic? I'd try and get another three-year contract. <laughs> 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 you would not be budging. <laughs> there, there you are, Robbie. Quite happy to go. Robbie, quite happy to go out and go. Go on then. Go on. Do your best. Brilliant. Uh, Twenty grand. Yep. Yeah, the one thing that's in the back, and this is the fun. This is about the professionalism of it. You may be getting a huge wage, but Craig Gordon wants to play, and he wants to play because you never know what can happen. He could become number one for the Euros. He could. As I said, he's, I think he's still got a lot to offer. You know, I don't think he's done by any means. Um, I've always rated him. I played with Craig way back in under-21s with Scotland. And I always rated him as a, as a top goalkeeper. Um, he had a bad injury. I think he broke his arm. There was a lot of rumours that he'd, he was going to retire after Sunderland. But he's kept, he bounced back well at Celtic. And uh, I think he's still got a lot of offer. I think it would be a great sign for Hearts. You know, I look at Hearts as three goalkeepers. And I don't think if you mix the three of them together, you still wouldn't get a good goalkeeper. So I think Craig Gordon would be a, would be a great signing for Hearts. OK, uh, talking <coughs> of uh, other players that could be on the move in this window, what about Lauren Shankland? At what point uh, does it become mm. a situation where you have to take the money? United, 18 points clear at the top of the Championship. They're heading back to the Premiership. I don't think anybody's going to dispute that. But could they still do it without the goals machine and take the money? Uh, this is a statement coming out of Dundee United on this one. It depends what the bid is. If someone comes in with a million pounds, says Robbie Nielsen, the manager, it's going to get thrown out the door. It's a question for the owner. He makes the decisions about what gets done, I advise. I'd keep Lawrence until the end of his contract, but it doesn't make financial sense for the club. The price of keeping Lawrence is high because we've got to get back into the top league. Um, so at what point do you think it becomes a situation of we're definitely going to get there, let's gamble and take the money and it has to be a certain price? Well, it's obvious I'm not going to take a million quid for him. So I would probably think in between that one and a half and two million pound, if a bid like that come in, they would let him go. I mean, I, I, I've got to be honest with you, I think the boy's done fantastically well the last couple of years. He had it tough as a young kid up at Aberdeen. He's went down to Air United, scored <coughs> goals League One, done it with Air United again in the Championship. Then he's moved on to a bigger club in Dundee United and continued that. So I, I'm not surprised there's a lot of suitors after him because he's, he's impressed me. He has. It's not just his goal scoring as well. I think his overall game has got better since he's went there. And he hit an absolute screamer last night again. I mean, if, if, if you're talking about adding a zero on, you know, or 10 or 20, 30,000 pounds extra, you know, he's doing it week in, week out. It's not just normal tappings. It's screamers like last night. And he scored two goals against Hibs, you know, a, a top six team in the Premier League. You know, so he's proven he can do it in the top league. Um, great goal last night, brings it down his chest, then fires it in the top corner, brilliant goal. So he can get all, all types of goals, <coughs> you know, he can score from range, he can score tappings. Um, I think he's, I agree with Barry, I think he's done fantastically well. Stoke were up watching him last night, uh, by all accounts. I mean, £2 million to a club like Stoke, you know, as, as chicken feed really. And I think a club in England will, will definitely pay that for him. And of course, you know what it's like. Two and two usually makes five in our book rumours. As soon as you see somebody in the stands, Ruffy, you think to yourself, he's on a move. Aidan McGeady spotted in the stands. Mm -hmm. Could he be on his way to Hibs? The Jack Ross link up at Sunderland as well. I, I mean, if, listen, if Aidan McGeady suddenly decided he wanted to take <clears> a huge wage cut and go to Hibs, I think he would be a sensation for them. Well, the first thing is he would have to take a huge wage cut because the wages that he brought at Hibs have been no near what, what he's getting down there. Uh, again, I haven't seen him that much, but certainly he's still got quality. Uh, he would be an addition to the Hibs squad. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And uh, I think it's all about finance. He's only 33, Peter. Yeah. When we look at Chris Burke, 36 years old, still <coughs> doing it before Kamarnock in the Premier League. <sighs> Aidan McGeady would be a frightening signing for Hibs. Great I, signing, I, great oh, signing. Like, yeah. oh, would you brilliant. love to see him there? Oh, I'd love to see him at Hibs. I think he'd be a great signing. Uh, as you said, two and two together, maybe he's got to Dundee United. Yeah.
<clears throat> oh, look, there's a pig flying over your head. Uh, yeah, I just spotted it uh, just in time. Uh, and of course, I don't know about you, Rafi. I was just thinking, Aidan McGeady to Hibbs. Uh, I mean, when he was in Russia, he could obviously <laughs> siphon the money out without any tax. Is there any kind of a tax implications <laughs> in Edinburgh? Could he sign and somehow manage to get the wages out to the Cayman Islands? <laughs> no, it would have to be some deal. Uh, but in this day and age, you know, we all know these deals can happen through one thing or another. So it's just all about finance. He's made his money, surely he's, he can take a oh. Absolutely, you yeah, are kidding me. I think he's still got, is it 18 months he's still got down there? Yeah. I'm sure they can come to some sort of agreement, but I'm the like, same as Tam, I think if they come up here, he's still light a league up. Yeah, to be honest with you, I think Aidan McGeady could buy Leith. Mm-hmm. Just a thought uh, when you think about the money he earned over there in Russia as well. Um, but again, we're not jealous in any capacity on this programme. Uh, a big thank you to you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, the chat. You can give us your comments on some of the topics we've been discussing on Twitter at PLZ Soccer. Uh, why not join us in the Facebook Live? You get a chance to ask these guys questions live on Facebook <laughs> every day, Monday to Friday. And then uh, let's not forget YouTube. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, you could be in for something special. We've got a big competition coming up with a trip for you and a pal and it is something that I don't think you will ever forget. Great competition coming up and all I'm going to say to you, if you stick with PLZ Soccer, there's a car on the way as well. Uh, Okay, enough of that. I've teased you enough. Join us tomorrow if you can. It will be Thursday. Tam Cowan will be with me and we'll give you details of our podcast as well, which is released on the Friday. Thanks to Ruffy. Thanks to Tam. Thanks to Barry Ferguson and from myself, Peter Martin. Thanks for watching. Expect the best used car deals guaranteed. Visit arnoldclark.com.